Hi, it's Katrina. The Watchtowers of Argon Gorge. The famous Ushkaloi Twin Towers of the Argon Gorge are located in the heart of Chechnya. The gorge itself has been home to countless cultures, filled with roughly 600 monuments of ancient history, archaeology, culture, and nature. The gorge was used as a pass for caravans during the Middle Ages and was home to nomadic tribes who lived in the impassable jungles and sheltered against the steep rock walls. Here you can find cave grottos, burial tombs, ancestral crypts from the 10th century, and even ruined castle complexes. But by far the most striking pieces of advanced ancient engineering are the towers which dominate the skyline atop bridges and mountain peaks throughout Chechnya. In general, these architectural wonders are called Vinak Towers and range anywhere from 30 to 75 feet tall. Some towers were used as residential structures, built in medieval settlements like Erzi and Nikaroy. Others were built as military installations. The oldest of them all date back 2,000 years. The Ushkaloi Twin Towers themselves, known as the Great Watch Houses over the Gorge, are only about 900 years old. What makes them especially fascinating is that they were built out of the solid rock of the gorge, guarding the pass. Nobody would have been able to move through the passage without walking past these imposing towers. The ingenuity of such a design feat is impressive, and even more impressive that the towers haven't yet crumbled. The Inca Road System there is a lot of talk about how great the ancient Roman roads once were. And while it's true that the Romans did develop an impressive system of roadways to connect their empire, they weren't the only ones. Thousands of miles away on the other side of the world, the Inca were also tying together an empire using roads. There are thousands of miles of pathways in South America, all created by the Inca so their people could travel across their vast kingdom. Inca roads were made from interlocking stones, laid across some of the most epic landscapes on the planet. These roads can be found on the coast, high up in cloud forests, and are in six modern-day countries. One of the ancient passageways is still used on a daily basis by tourists who climb Time to Machu Picchu. According to Ramiro Matos with the Smithsonian National Museum, there could be up to 37,000 miles of roadways built by the ancient Inca, winding through Colombia, Ecuador, Bolivia, Chile, Argentina, and of course Peru. It's amazing because the vast empire didn't have a writing system that we've found yet. They didn't even use the wheel in any practical sense, and yet they built one of the greatest road systems the world has ever seen. It was complete with interstates, major highways, local roads, and dirt paths leading into the more rural parts of the empire. The road operated for less than 100 years, active from between 1450 to 1532. Sadly, when the Spanish arrived, they were able to use these roads to conquer the entire Inca Empire more easily. The roads led the Spanish conquistadors from city to city as they launched an endless assault and subjugated the natives. Leonardo's Mechanical Knight in roughly 1495, the great inventor Leonardo da Vinci came up with a technology long before his time. He created a mechanical knight, or an automaton knight. It was a humanoid robot that functioned kind of like a giant steel puppet. The blueprints for the robot were uncovered in sketchbooks belonging to Leonardo da Vinci that were dug up in the 1950s. In his notes, he claims that he showed the machine at a festival in the court of Milan with great success. The robot could stand, it was able to raise its visor, and it even maneuvered its arms independently. It obviously didn't have artificial intelligence or any kind of electronics, but it was the first functional robot to come to life. Its robotic systems were worked by a series of pulleys and cables rather than hydraulics and switches. Although the actual robot has never been found, we know Leonardo da Vinci's design really did work. After the sketchbook was discovered, modern scientists built their own version of the robot in 2007, exactly as the design was described in his journal. They discovered it to be 100% functional. Even clad in heavy medieval armor, it still mimicked human motions. The Pyramids of Palau The Pyramids of Palau are some of the most highly advanced pieces of engineering from the ancient world. Recently, archaeologists conducted studies of these pyramids located on the island nation of Palau. They uncovered both the construction methods and how much work it took to build them. There was a large team of researchers involved, with everything from soil scientists to ordinary archaeologists. They concluded that the ancient builders used volcanic rock and a huge quantity of ceramics to form the base of each pyramid. They then created 
created the upper layers using a specific kind of soil. Unlike many pyramids across the world that were used as temples or tombs, these were used for horticulture. At the summits of the pyramids, food was grown to feed the island residents. This is a pretty exciting revelation. On this isolated island in Oceania, there was a culture of people who cared more about food and prosperity than burying their leaders in monumental wastes of resources. They built pyramids simply to grow food, although some were used as burial sites. At the tops of some of these pyramids, researchers have found bones. But for the most part, this was all agricultural. Even more amazing is that the development of these pyramids and the complex society on Palau started sometime around 500 BC. The construction of the pyramids didn't happen overnight either. It took generations. Millions of tons of soil had to be moved by workers, something that was only possible in a politically organized society that didn't squabble amongst themselves. The fact that the pyramids took hundreds of years to complete proves shocking stability in the governance of the island. This really was a remarkable culture, both for their engineering feats and for their ability to work towards a single achievable goal. Boring through granite One of the biggest mysteries when it comes to technology from the ancient Egyptians is that they bored straight through granite. Sure, the Egyptians had advances in medicine, astronomy, writing, culture, and more, but it's really their stonework and the fact that they were able to cut and drill straight through granite that makes them almost unbelievable. Granite is specifically important in this case because it's considered far more difficult to cut and manipulate than softer rocks like limestone and sandstone. Right now, the mainstream view of archaeologists is that the ancient Egyptians achieved this feat using copper, bronze, and wood. Egyptian masons put these three things together to create highly advanced tools that bored through granite. There were others who insist the Egyptians used advanced technology handed to them by a group of superior beings. The truth is we haven't found definitive evidence in either case. We've obviously never found ancient Egyptian batteries to suggest they were using modern technology, and we also haven't found any serious copper brass mechanisms that could have worked drills through the hard rock. Right now, we just have to assume the Egyptians were seriously ingenious and put simplistic tools to really good use. Persian Refrigerators About 2,400 years ago, Persian engineers built the world's very first refrigerator. It didn't have coils and it wasn't small enough to fit in the kitchen, but it did work well enough that the Persians could store ice in the summer in one of the hottest places in the world. Ice would be chopped from nearby mountains in huge amounts during the winter, brought down to the desert settlement, and then stored in this large large ancient refrigerator. For 400 BC, this was a very impressive piece of technology. It was called a yakchal, and it was used to store ice gathered in the winters through to summer. The ice stored in these huge refrigerators was used to make chilled treats for royal Persians in the devastating heat of summer, as well as for food storage. Here's how the refrigerator worked. It was an above-ground structure made from mud brick into the shape of a dome, usually around 60 feet tall. Within the dome was an underground space with storage capacity. The space was equipped with wind catchers that channeled the wind into the structure, cooling the air temperature inside. Even if it was blistering hot outside, the inside of a yakchal would be like stepping into a walk-in fridge. The Marib Dam the Marib Dam in Yemen was once the greatest dam in the entire world. It's considered in the top 10 of the greatest engineering marvels of prehistory, a great success of human ingenuity that stretched for 1,500 feet. Ancient people in Arabia used the dam to turn what was otherwise a desert into an oasis paradise. They used the dam to irrigate roughly 100 square miles of sandy soil, something that never before had been done on such a megalithic scale. When the dam was broken and collapsed in the 6th century, it was so devastating to the region that it brought the destruction of the city of Merib, wiping out an entire kingdom. Merib was the seat of power for the kingdom of Saba. The kingdom was wildly wealthy because of their trading power along the spice route that ran between the Mediterranean and further in the east. This was only possible because of the Great Dam. The irrigation allowed the Saba to grow more crops, which produced more frankincense and myrrh, their chief exports on the spice route. It also allowed them to adequately feed their people, which was, of course, hugely important. The dam lasted even after the Sabaeans were replaced by the Himyarite, but only until around 570. Lasting somewhere around 1,000 years makes it one of the most successful building projects in human history. Ancient Prosthetics Prosthetics are by no means a new invention. This is actually an ancient technology that goes back at least 3,000 years. Two decades ago, when archaeologists were excavating a burial chamber in an ancient Egyptian necropolis near Luxor, they came across an exquisitely made prosthetic of a big toe. 
It had been fitted to a woman who was the daughter of an important Egyptian priest. The artifact is now known as the Cairo Toe, and it's the oldest prosthesis that's ever been found. In modern times, researchers used computer tomography and x-ray scans to get to the bottom of how the toe was made. They created a 3D mock-up of the device, identified which materials were used in its creation, and saw how it was crafted. They even learned that the toe had been refitted several times to perfectly match with the woman's foot. According to the press release from the University of Basel in Switzerland, the artisan who crafted the toe must have been really familiar with human physiognomy. The toe came complete with a robust belt strap to keep it in place. It was carved to have a natural look while still being comfortable. It also probably helped the woman in her everyday life. It's doubtful the toe was only for looks, but probably improved her balance and made walking a lot easier. The Barbegal Mill There is an ancient ruin at the Roman site of Barbegal that was once a water mill, an amazing piece of technology that allowed the Romans to harness the power of water. It's located near the small French town of Arles and was likely employed by the Romans for industrial use in the 2nd century AD. There are also two ancient aqueducts nearby, which likely supplied the city with almost unlimited water. The mill was a huge complex built against the slope of a hill, complete with 16 water wheels. These water wheels utilized water coming in from the aqueducts to power a flour mill. It was an industrial scale operation way before its time. In fact, the Barbagal mill has been called the greatest concentration of mechanical power anywhere in the ancient world. What was the flour mill used for? For making bread, of course. This was the center of bread making in all of ancient Roman-occupied France. Experts have estimated about 4.5 tons of pure flour was made per day thanks to the advanced engineering of the mill. That was enough bread for up to 10,000 people a day, meaning the residents in this ancient Roman city had an abundance of bread. They had unlimited flour and water, two commodities most people could only dream of having a constant supply of 2,000 years ago. Vimana a Vimana is an ancient flying ship that may or may not have existed. In Hindu texts, the Vimana is described as a flying chariot, a self-moving vehicle that carried its occupants through the air. Some accounts have described it as a house or a palace, saying it was up to seven stories tall. Other accounts have described it more modestly, as a seat or throne that magically hovered high above the heads of ancient people. In fact, Vimana translates directly in some Indian languages to aircraft. Sadly, not a single piece of physical evidence has ever been discovered to suggest the Indians really did create flying vehicles thousands of years ago, but there has been plenty of speculation. Some claim the Vimanas used highly advanced mercury vortex engines to hover over land. Some say they were powered by jet engines. There are weird accounts of elephants running in panic as huge hovering Vimana came gliding over the land. There are even suggestions that specialized gyroscopes embedded in liquid mercury kept the vehicles airborne. But like I said before, the only actual evidence is in myth. There are plenty of references to these flying machines, from the account in ancient writings to carvings in temples and depictions in ancient artwork. Some believe the Vimana weren't actually used by humans, but were the spaceships of extraterrestrials that visited Earth for a few hundred years before going back to space. Dinosaurs and Pyramids Hold on to your hats because we have a new theory about the pyramids. A team of archaeologists from the University of Cairo have allegedly discovered proof that the ancient Egyptians lived alongside dinosaurs. The evidence comes in the form of an ancient papyrus and some stone pallets from 3500 BC. The papyrus was allegedly written by individuals who had participated in the construction of the Pyramid of Khufu, the biggest pyramid of Giza. In this document from thousands of years ago, the builders described beastly creatures of preposterous size. Archaeologist Nabir ibn al-Samud says the beasts mentioned in the text were most likely dinosaurs. Then there are the 26 stone pallets covered in hieroglyphic writing and carved with images of mysterious monsters. These stone artifacts were allegedly discovered in a cave just outside Cairo. The cave had been a sort of storage depot about 4,600 years ago. The stone carvings show people building the pyramids using the help of massive beasts which can be seen with leashes around their necks. It's a pretty big stretch to think ancient Egyptians tamed dinosaurs that had gone extinct many millions of years earlier. Still, there are plenty of conspiracy theorists who believe images like these are evidence of great prehistoric behemoths assisting the Egyptians. The dinosaurs, which some say were brontosaurus, like dinosaurs with the long necks, 
helped move the giant stones they needed to build their greatest monuments. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. The Odessa Catacomb Labyrinth The twisting and turning catacomb labyrinth underneath Odessa in Ukraine has some dark and mysterious secrets. Odessa is one of the most beautiful destinations in all of Ukraine, known to Europeans as the Pearl of the Black Sea. But it's underneath the city where things get really interesting. The Odessa Catacomb Labyrinth is accessible through an unassuming garage on the side of a road. Within the garage is a gateway that leads down into one of the biggest urban labyrinths anywhere in the world. It's over 2,000 kilometers of tunnels reaching depths of about 60 meters. It's a vast underground city with at least 1,000 entrances spread throughout Odessa. It makes the catacombs of Rome and Paris look small in comparison. The labyrinth is spread over three levels, and not all of it is connected. There are caves, abandoned mining quarries, creepy tunnels, and forgotten World War II bunkers. Its believed construction began around the time Odessa was founded in the 18th century. The catacombs are so confusing to explore that not every last nook and cranny has been documented. It is a literal underground maze where bodies have been found, underground lakes, and strange writings on the walls that look like they may have been put there by some secret cult. Humans from Outer Space There is a theory going around that humans actually came from outer space. There are some scientists out there, and plenty of people too, who really do believe humans didn't evolve on this planet. Instead, humanity was brought here from somewhere else, dropped off like an unwanted baby. While this may sound a bit crazy, or a lot crazy, there are some interesting facts that more or less make the theory somewhat believable. For example, scientists already know that humans are made up of space dust. Stars way out in the universe that go supernova and explode shoot the building blocks of life across vast distances. These supernovas create pretty much all the elements on the periodic table, including the ones that make up our bodies. We are literally made from elements birthed during the explosion of a supernova. Another crazy theory that recently made itself into the mainstream is one that says life originated on Mars. A certain mineral was found in Martian meteorites, which scientists say could have been the missing ingredient that led to human life. According to American ecologist Dr. Ellis Silver, we didn't evolve here. We arrived totally separately from everything else. Part of his theory is based on our own human physiology. Dr. Silver says that even though we are well adapted to life on Earth, we aren't perfect. We are the only species that requires clothing so that we don't freeze in the winter. We can't stand out in the sun like other animals or we'll burn. Plus, we're plagued by chronic illnesses unlike any other living animal. Then there's the fact that human babies have heads so big that women have a tough time giving birth, which proved frequently fatal to the mother, child, or both in earlier eras. This is something most animals don't have to deal with and feels like a wrong step in the evolutionary path. Then there are the extra 223 genes not found in any species, which scientists are still totally baffled by. Bodies in the Great Wall The Great Wall of China dates back about 2,300 years. It stretches an astounding 13,000 miles long, even if some parts are broken or totally destroyed, and that makes it the longest monument in the world. It should come as no surprise, the Great Wall of China also comes with some major conspiracy theories. You've most likely heard before that the Great Wall of China can be seen from space, but apparently that's a lie. It was in 1932 that Robert Ripley, the guy behind Believe It or Not, said the Great Wall would probably be the only man-made structure visible from the moon. His wild guess turned into an urban myth, which many people believe is a fact to this day. But the truth is that the Great Wall can't be seen from space at all. Perhaps the most ghoulish conspiracy surrounding the Great Wall is that it's filled with bodies. This great Chinese monument wasn't exactly built by a bunch of volunteer masons and bricklayers, but by people forced into labor. An estimated one million people were forced to build the wall, and there are rumors that say when a worker died, their corpse was thrown into the wall. That would mean there are hundreds of thousands of skeletons hiding underneath the stone, though nobody has found any evidence that this is true. Dark matter killed the dinosaurs. 
Scientists are now saying dark matter may have been what doomed the dinosaurs. Unseen forces in space could actually be behind some of the biggest extinction events in history and could contribute to catastrophes in the future. 66 million years ago, mainstream scientists agree that a space rock the size of a mountain hit our planet and killed the dinos. As for the other four main mass extinction events, these have been attributed to things like volcanic eruptions and underwater methane leaks. But now, scientists think our solar system might be traveling through a thin disk of dark matter every so often that triggers bombardments from comets. These bombardments are behind the mass extinctions every 26 million years, give or take a few million. And it's not just one great big comet, it's a lot of them. The biggest issue is that scientists don't really understand dark matter. This invisible substance supposedly flows through everything and acts as the cosmic scaffolding that keeps our universe from collapsing. Dark matter is only detectable by observing the force of its gravitational pull on other things. Scientists think there could be some kind of giant cloud of this stuff at the edge of the Milky Way, and it shakes comets out of their orbit and sends them rocketing toward Earth when it passes. This wipes out most of life on the planet every 26 to 30 million years, like clockwork. Do you think it's possible that dark matter killed the dinosaurs? Let me know in the comments below. King Xerxes whipped the sea. Xerxes, king of Persia, had the biggest army the world had ever seen in the year 480 BC. He had an estimated 300,000 troops who were ready to descend on Greece and roll over them like a tide of death. Xerxes thought he had anticipated everything, even building bridges and roads to help get his army to Athens quicker so it could be crushed. But before he could do that, history says his bridges were destroyed by a sudden storm when the sea rose up and washed them away. It was devastating and was one of the things that led to Xerxes ultimately being defeated. 2,400 and some odd years later, there is still a bizarre myth about what Xerxes did that day when he found his bridges destroyed. It's less of a conspiracy and more of an unbelievable piece of history that really did happen. Xerxes was so angry at the sea for impeding his progress that he marched out to the shore and gave it 300 lashes. The great Xerxes of Persia literally whipped the water with a chain 300 times for betraying him, while his legions of soldiers watched from a short distance and cursed the sea and its treachery. Ukrainian Black Pyramid the mysterious Black Pyramid of Ukraine is supposedly the oldest in the world. There are some people out there who believe the Russians actually started war with Ukraine just to get their hands on this monument. There are pretty much no official reports about it, so nothing has been confirmed by mainstream scientists. But the unofficial reports say that an expert by the name of Vitaly Go discovered the Black Pyramid buried underground. It stands about 150 feet tall and almost double that in length. There are no pictures of the pyramid, and scientists are supposedly having some unknown difficulty getting close enough to study it. This is major conspiracy theory stuff, with people reporting nearly 40 similar pyramids buried throughout Crimea. We don't know what they could have been used for, or why they are so important, but supposedly they are there. To make things even stranger, in 2006, archaeologists did officially find a pyramid structure older than those in Egypt. According to a report from The Guardian, it dates back to the early Bronze Age and was built by a group of sun-worshipping humans. It was the very first pyramid of its kind to be found in Europe. But weirdly enough, after it was first discovered, there was pretty much no more mention of it, as if archaeologists were told to ignore it and leave the site alone. The Labyrinth of Amenemhat III The Labyrinth of Amenemhat III is a mysterious labyrinth, an urban legend, and a conspiracy theory of its own. The labyrinth is said to have been one of the greatest engineering achievements in all of ancient Egypt, and yet its function and even existence is still disputed by historians. Ancient Egyptian records say the maze was built during the 12th dynasty by Pharaoh Amenemhat III in the Fayum Oasis. The ancient city of Fayum, originally called Shedet in Egyptian, is said to be the oldest out of all the cities in Egypt, dating back to around 2686 BC. It was here where extensive irrigation networks were built, huge agricultural projects to channel the power of the Nile, and so the city of Fayum was built, and underneath it a temple in the form of a mysterious labyrinth. The labyrinth was dedicated to the crocodile-headed god Sobek. Depending on who you ask, the labyrinth either truly existed 
or is just a fairy tale. The issue is that there are many different references to it in ancient Egyptian scripts, but little in the way of physical evidence. Historians of the day described a massive underground maze of rooms and chambers, anywhere between 1,500 and 3,000. There were actual crocodiles kept in the maze, which the priests believed to be the incarnation of their god. There have been ruins discovered in the Fayum Oasis that appear to be that of a buried temple labyrinth. The issue is that the ruins are scant and poorly studied. It's almost as if archaeologists are staying away from it. Nobody knows how big this mysterious underground temple complex was. If it did have 3,000 rooms and was an immense labyrinth, or what? It's just lacking the study needed to definitively give answers one way or the other. Labyrinth at Chartres Cathedral The labyrinth at Chartres Cathedral in France is one of the most recognizable in the world. It's not a huge labyrinth complex or an underground catacomb of twisting corridors, but a simple pattern set into the floor stones of the famous cathedral. This labyrinth, even if it is only two-dimensional, is shrouded in myth and mystery. Some believe the pattern on the floor is meant to be a representation of each pilgrim's spiritual quest as they travel to the Holy Land. And in fact, there are other similar labyrinth patterns all throughout Europe, most of them dated to around the 12th century. The labyrinth at Chartres is only about 42 feet in diameter and was supposedly once decorated with the image of a minotaur at its center. Even more mysterious is that nobody really knows when the labyrinth was originally constructed. It may have been the 13th century, but no documents have ever been found to confirm this. There is also little known about who built it. Back in 2001, Investigators claim the center of the labyrinth was directly over a memorial tomb, though after a lot of digging, no bodies were ever found. Stone Age Ritual Labyrinth Recent excavations in Denmark have revealed a mysterious ancient labyrinth older than any other. It goes all the way back to the Stone Age, built in the Neolithic era anywhere between 5,000 and 4,000 years ago. Researchers discovered a series of ancient fences in an area about the size of two football fields. These fences were found one inside the other, looking like some kind of mysterious labyrinth. Because they are so old, it is difficult for researchers to really see what the pattern was, but the structure was clearly a type of maze. It had high walls and winding passages that would have made it easy to get lost while moving through it. Archaeologist Pernil Sloth told Science Nordic that whatever this structure was, it probably functioned as a very real labyrinth. However, he did admit that his team hasn't found any concrete evidence to say what was happening here. They found only flint tools, ancient human waste, ceramic fragments, and of course the ruins of the labyrinth walls. They believe it might have been some kind of gathering area. It could have been a place where Stone Age people were forced to find their way through the labyrinth to its core, where they then performed unknown rituals. The Mummy Cold Case The Federal Bureau of Investigation recently cracked its coldest case ever, dating back 4,000 years to ancient Egypt. The FBI extracted DNA from a mummy's head and was able to identify the long-dead individual. The mystery began in 1915, when a team of American archaeologists discovered the severed mummy head in the Egyptian necropolis of Deir el Bersha. The head was sent back to America and stored at Boston's Museum of Fine Arts. But no one was ever able to figure out just who the head belonged to. It had been separated from its body and was found in a tomb that may not have been its own. The head was uncovered inside the tomb of Jehu Tignacht and his wife, a governor from the Middle Kingdom of Egypt. But in the 4,000 years since the tomb was built, it was robbed and ransacked numerous times. The bodies within were tampered with, and the burial site was almost burned down. To make matters even more confusing, the head had many of its most important bones removed. Things like the cheekbones and part of the jaw hinge were taken after death. It was part of an ancient ritual to allow the dead person to eat and drink in the afterlife. In 2016, a piece of tooth was brought to forensic scientist Dr. Odile Laurel with the FBI. She analyzed the DNA inside the tooth and confirmed that the head belonged to a man and that it was most likely Governor Jehutinakt. There was a big fuss for over a century about who the head belonged to. And in the end, it was the same guy who owned the tomb, the Queen's Chamber. Deep inside the Great Pyramid of Giza, also known as the Pyramid of Khufu, 
there is a maze of tunnels and chambers. The entrance to the pyramid is located near the ground level. Through the entrance, which goes diagonally down into the structure, there then comes a fork. The tunnel splits into a descending passageway and an ascending passageway. If you take the passageway leading up, you wind up in the grand gallery. This is a super passage that goes to the very heart of the pyramid, to its core where a mysterious chamber sits seemingly unused. It's called the Queen's Chamber, and nobody is really sure what it was used for. The chamber was discovered in 1872, hidden behind a solid wall of brick. For whatever reason, it had been sealed away as a secret inside the pyramid. When researchers entered the room, much to their disappointment, they didn't find anything. The room is finished with smooth limestone blocks and has a gabled ceiling. The masonry is exquisite, and yet there seems to have been no reason for it. It was empty except for a small copper object, a chunk of wood, and a random hook. There's been a lot of speculation over what was contained within the Queen's Chamber. Some say it was once full of treasure, but that it was pillaged over time and the door was sealed. Others believe the room, due to its location underneath the king's chamber, was used as a spiritual tomb for the soul of the king. While King Khufu's body was kept in one room, his eternal soul was put to rest in another. King Tutankhamun Prior to 1922, no one believed the tomb of King Tutankhamun would ever be found. Back then, the boy king who ruled for less than a decade, 3,000 years ago, was more of a myth than a reality. The general agreement among Egyptologists was that every tomb in the Valley of the Kings had already either been discovered or looted and destroyed. It came as a huge shock when King Tut's tomb was finally unearthed under over 150,000 tons of rock. It was extremely well hidden and would likely never have been found if archaeologists weren't actively searching for it. King Tut would probably still be resting in his grave right now. Even though the tomb was found filled with more treasure than you could carry out in a wheelbarrow, it had been broken into before. One of the little-known facts about King Tut's tomb is that it had been robbed twice. It happened almost immediately after the burial. Looters had breached the door at the base of the stairs, taking a handful of smaller objects, and then fled. Ancient officials then sealed the opening, only to have it broken into a second time and more small objects stolen. The biggest mystery is trying to figure out when exactly the tomb became lost. Clearly, people knew about it in the years after Tutankhamun's death, but then, at some point in time, the tomb was forgotten, covered in sand, and buried under thousands of tons of rock. The Secret Entrance The Great Pyramid of Giza was built around the year 2500 BC as a tomb for King Khufu. If true, that makes the pyramid little more than a gigantic tombstone and yet it's also filled with strange secrets. Some believe there are mysterious tunnels underneath the Giza pyramids leading to unknown locations. Some think the three pyramids worked as huge batteries for charging alien spaceships. There is even a theory about a secret entrance hiding near the top of Khufu's pyramid that leads down into secret and undiscovered chambers. Recently, one of the secrets of the pyramid was revealed. An international team of researchers with something called the Scan Pyramids Project identified an empty space. They used special, non-invasive scanning technology to look inside the structure. That was when they found a void hiding within the pyramid that doesn't seem to be attached to any known passage or chamber. This mysterious void is way above the Queen's Chamber and next to the King's Chamber. However, there appears to be no passage leading to it and no way to get to it except for digging through with a jackhammer. It could be that this void was once reachable by a secret passageway, but that secret entrance has since been sealed. Nobody knows if there are bodies inside the chamber or if there was an engineering accident. All we know now is that there is a hole inside the pyramid and we have no way of looking inside it. Caves under Giza British explorer Andrew Collins believes there is a system of caves, tunnels, and hidden chambers hiding underneath the pyramids of Giza. Andrew claims that beneath the Giza plateau is a lost underworld of the pharaohs, a world currently inhabited by colonies of bats and venomous spiders. 
Andrew claims that he uncovered the entrance to this creepy underworld after looking through the memoirs of British Consul General Henry Salt. Henry investigated an underground system beneath Giza in 1817 while traveling with the famous Italian explorer Giovanni Caviglia. Andrew studied the notes taken by the explorer and then found his own way into the underground complex through a secret, unmarked tomb west of the Great Pyramid. If what Andrew says is correct, the entrance to an entire subterranean system is hiding at the back of a cobweb-filled catacomb. A crack in the rock at the back of the tomb leads into a natural cave, which then opens into an underworld. However, there are a lot of professionals who believe Andrew is making his story up. Zahi Hawass, the chief of Egypt's Supreme Council of Antiquities, dismissed the discovery as nonsense. He says there are no new discoveries to be made at Giza. Gabal El Haridi Archaeologists have just made some amazing discoveries at the Egyptian site of Gabal El Haridi. Researchers found the remains of an old watchtower and an impressive 85 new tombs. The watchtower is a unique piece of ancient architecture. When it comes to discoveries in Egypt, people tend to focus on the tombs, the mummies, and the pyramids. But Egypt has lots of amazing architecture as well, just as impressive as the many wonders found throughout the old Roman Empire. This tower is an excellent example of that. The tower was a powerful fortification built beside the Nile River during the reign of Ptolemy III. He was the third ruler of the Ptolemaic dynasty after the death of Alexander the Great, ruling Egypt between 246 and 222 BC. The tower was used specifically for guarding traffic moving up and down the Nile and collecting taxes. Think of it like the toll booth on a bridge, forcing everyone who passed to pay a little bit of money to the government. Then there were the 85 tombs, each of which was carved into the side of a mountain. Some of the tombs were reserved for workers, and others were more complex, with multiple levels and various chambers. At least 30 of the chambers still had their death certificates preserved in stone. These ancient certificates detail the name of the deceased, their age, their place in society, and even the names of their parents. Forgotten Rituals Berenike was a Greco-Roman seaport built on the coast of Egypt's eastern desert. A recent archaeological dig here revealed a religious complex from the late Roman period between the 4th and 6th centuries AD. This was in the dying years of Egypt, when ancient Egypt was a thing of the past and the nation was little more than a fractured state being fought over by multiple powers. The religious complex was excavated by researchers with the University of Delaware. Around the time the temple was built, the nomadic group known as the Blemies was trying to hold control over the region. These people had come up from Nubia and were hoping to secure a small piece of Egypt for themselves. The complex was already there, but the Blemies adapted it to their own belief system. What archaeologists found was a traditional Egyptian temple used by an invading force of Nubians for their own mysterious rituals. The team found 15 dead falcons inside the shrine, most of them decapitated. They also found the remains of eggs that had been buried within the temple. Then there's the mysterious stone slab with an inscription that reads, it is improper to boil a head in here. In other words, nobody was allowed to boil animal heads inside the temple. So what were the falcons for? It's believed the Blemies had combined local Egyptian beliefs with their own and that there was heavy worship of the god Khonsu here, the moon god often depicted as a falcon. Newly found tombs More tombs have been discovered at the great necropolis of Saqqara, south of Cairo. That shouldn't come as a big surprise considering how many new tombs are being discovered here all the time. In this instance, five new stone burials have been found dating from between 2700 and 2055 BC. They were uncovered near the less popular Pyramid of Merenre, which stands just over 150 feet tall and was built during the 6th dynasty. The five tombs are so wonderfully decorated that they are still full of color. Researchers say they likely belonged to top officials in the ancient Egyptian government. At least two of the tombs belong to women, with one of them being a priest of Hathor, the Egyptian goddess of fertility and love. Her name was Peti, and she must have been a very important person in society. She wasn't just a priest, 
she had some kind of influence within the government. It's also shocking to see that women could be priests almost 5,000 years ago in ancient Egypt. Lost Egyptian Sun Temples Archaeologists carrying out an excavation in Abu Sir, near both Cairo and Saqqara, recently discovered the ruins of an ancient temple. This temple is believed to be one of the four lost sun temples from Egyptian legend. The site of Abu Sir isn't quite as well known as many others in ancient Egypt, but it is hugely important. It's a necropolis from the Old Kingdom that served as a primary cemetery for the previous Egyptian capital of Memphis. So far, archaeologists have identified 14 royal pyramids, tombs from the 25th century BC, and now a mysterious temple. It was researchers from Poland and Italy who came across the newest discovery. They were excavating the temple of Pharaoh Nyuseraini from the 5th dynasty when they found the remains of a mud brick building. The Egyptian Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities believes the mud brick building is the ruin of a sun temple. The sun temples were constructed during the 5th dynasty of the Old Kingdom, built across Egypt by six different pharaohs. Each pharaoh built their own glorious sun temple for the worship of the sun god Ra. As of right now, only two of the temples have been found. This newest discovery at Abu Sir could be the third, meaning there are only three left hiding somewhere in Egypt. However, it's in such a disastrous state Archaeologists haven't been able to confirm it as one of the legendary temples. Ancient Mummification Researchers have just made a shocking discovery regarding the history of mummies. It turns out the science of mummification in Egypt is 1,000 years older than anyone previously believed. The discovery came in 2019 when the mummy of a high-ranking aristocrat was found in Egypt. The individual wasn't that important, but his mummification was… He is one of the oldest Egyptian mummies ever found, dating back to over 4,700 years ago. He was found wrapped in woven linen and smeared with fine resins. The linen and resin were hugely important because these particular materials were supposedly not used to make mummies until about 3,700 years ago. Up until now, researchers believed Old Kingdom mummification was extremely simple. There would be basic desiccation no removal of the brain, only a couple of internal organs taken out, and very little detail paid to the exterior of the mummy. But this newest mummy was totally unique, covered in resins and textiles as if it had been made 1,000 years later. The person inside the wrappings was named Kui, and he was found buried in Saqqara. With this new information, archaeologists believe history books about the mummification process will need to be rewritten. Thanks for watching. What's your favorite part about ancient Egypt? Let me know in the comments below. And remember to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. See you soon. Bye.